Today, we're going to be looking at the biggest fraud in the animal kingdom, the millipede. Everyone, you've been lied to. Not only does the millipede not have a million legs, for those of you that forgot that milli is derived from the Latin to mean thousand and not a shortened version of the word million. Nor does it have a thousand, but, the, but this millipede actually has, hang on, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Hundred and wait, so there's that many on that side. So it's like eighty eighty seven eighty seven times two. What's that? Hundred and sixty fourteen. 174? 174. 174-ish. Probably. I mean, that's still a lot of legs. But not a thousand. Definitely not a million. Still a fraud. Millipedes, like this white-legged snake millipede, have been around British gardens for about 500 million years. In fact, they would have been the only animal in the garden at the time. Not that there were really any gardens but what I'm trying to say is that millipedes were the first animal to ever colonise land. Yeah, long time ago. It's, it's really not surprising. I mean, with so many legs, it's kind of hard to, to lose your balance. It's worth noting that this probably isn't the case, but as soft-bodied organisms like worms don't really fossilise at all, uh, it's very hard to determine how long they've been around for. But animals with a hard exoskeleton, like this guy, fossilise a lot easier. So until the paleontology version of VAR comes out, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna stay with the result for now and, you know, not take away his medal. Eh? Hey? Good boy. Or girl. Mm. Unlike with most invertebrates, it's actually quite easy to sex a millipede. Which I find very exciting. Some people like roller coasters. I sex millipedes. That sounds so wrong. <laughs> In order to sex a millipede, you look at the seventh segment. What are you? I need you to stop moving. In adult males, the legs on this segment will be replaced by two structures called gonopods. These gonopods are kind of like the millipede equivalent of a penis. Ooh, it's a girl. And look at it. It's terrifying. Just, what is that? What is it? Unsurprisingly, females often take male advances to have sex as a sign of aggression. I mean, wouldn't you, if someone came up to you with what looks like the love child of a xenomorph and a scorpion and kind of like the tail of the weird creature from the Doctor Who episode, The Lazarus Experiment. I don't think I'd be too happy either. Females will often curl themselves into a defensive ball, meaning that the male doesn't have access to... Yeah. But all is not lost. In order to reassure the female that the male means no harm and simply wants to make some sweet, sweet babies, different species of millipede will have three separate tactics for calming her down. One is to gently walk over the back of the female, giving her a nice back massage with that lovely rhythmic movement of the legs. Another is to sing via a method of stridulation. Stridulation is a method of producing noise by rubbing two body parts together, which I don't really think constitutes as singing but hey you know that's what that's what the scientists say they say singing imagine going onto X Factor and just be like so what song are you gonna sing for us today be like well you know are you ready <clears throat> it's amazing you're not really gonna get anywhere it's not singing sorry 
really hurt my elbow. And three is to produce a nice, calming pheromone. The structure of the gonopod is often used to differentiate between different species of millipedes, because in science, this is all one species, whereas these are all different species. Why? It's complicated. That's all I can say. Zoology and taxonomy are just confusing sometimes. Their bizarre and confusing structure is most like the result of sexual selection. Some may have appendages for scooping out other males' sperm, because you too, Mrs. Millipede, are a hoe. Whereas others have structures to help get the female to become more sexually receptive. A thing I know we all wish we had. Don't lie. Bet you wish you had a special appendage which made females more sexually receptive. I have one. It is my face. <laughs> the gonopod itself isn't actually there to produce the sperm. This happens on the third segment of the millipede in a structure known as the gonopore. The gonopod is simply there to scoop up the sperm and deliver it to the female. When mating has been successful, the female will burrow down and lay her eggs in a protective chamber that she constructs out of her own faces. Feces. <laughs> out of her own faces. <laughs> like some horrible recreation of the Game of Thrones. <laughs> All of the undying. Just you wake up and your mum's face is just plastered to the walls. <laughs> no, she doesn't do that. Feces. Her own feces. You know, because that, that's much better. <laughs> My word. When they hatch, young millipedes only have three pairs of legs and six segments. Rather than being born with all of the appendages you're going to have for the rest of your life, like with most animals, millipedes undergo what's called an anamorphic development. With every new molt, they will gain an extra segment and an extra two fancy pairs of legs. This means that millipedes are made up of many metameric segments, which basically is a fancy sciencey way of saying that they're made up of many segments that are basically the same all in a line. This also the reason that millipedes move in that incredibly satisfying Mexican wave fashion. Although, as they've been around for 500 million years, it, sh it should probably be a millipede wave, but I mean, they just, they just didn't get the copyright. Which probably means that millipedes and Donald Trump have something in common. You hate Mexicans, don't you? No, I can't sue them. Because as I said in the last video, you don't have any rights. Animal rights or civil rights. No rights. No, I can't represent you. Because I'm not a lawyer. I do this. Yes, I am a disappointment to my parents. Thank you. Moving on. Dickhead. There are a number of segments within the millipede that don't follow this metameric system. The head is different from all the others. Obvious. Containing the, the antenna and the mouth. The segment after this is known as the column. This is basically the neck and also doesn't have any legs. The next three segments are known as the haplo segments. These only have one pair of legs each and are the segments that the millipede is born with. The rest of the body of the millipede is made up of the diplo segments. These are the metameric segments that get added on with each new molt. These metameric segments are the result of two embryonic segments fusing together. Each one has two pairs of legs. And at the very end, you have the tail sum, which is basically the tail and is a segment that all arthropods have. Okay, in summary, head, no legs, column, no legs, first three segments, one pair of legs, Tail, no legs. Rest of the segments, two pairs of legs. Four legs each. Got it? Yeah? Good. Good. It is this two pairs of legs on most of the body segments that is the main distinguishing feature between millipedes and centipedes, as centipedes only ever have one pair of legs. That's two. One pair of legs. <laughs> One pair of legs per segment. Millipedes two, centipedes one, unless it's a young millipede with only six segments and three 
leggy segments. You've got it, you've got it. I'm gonna trust that you've got it, and if not, shout at me in the comments. I'm sorry. I tried. Also unlike centipedes, millipedes are usually herbivores or detritivores, eating dead plant matter or fungus. They spend most of their lives underground, navigating via two antennae at the top of their head. Some species have very simple eyes, whereas some have no eyes at all. Do you have eyes? I don't think he has eyes. A lack of eyes isn't usually an issue for millipedes, as they spend most of their time underground, expertly digging burrows. Spending so much time in underground burrows also helps protect them from desiccation. Desiccation is a real risk for most millipedes due to the lack of a waxy cuticle and the presence of spiracles. Spiracles are openings in the side of the exoskeleton of many invertebrates. They lead to a trachea, which then leads to a tracheole, which delivers oxygen directly into the cells of the animal. Now, I'm sure most of you are thinking that delivering oxygen directly into the cells, rather than having it go into some weird bodily fluid to then be taken into the cells, like happens with us, sounds more efficient. But you would be wrong. And trust me, many of you would not like invertebrates if they had lungs. Because they'd be massive. Insects mainly rely on natural diffusion of oxygen. Rather than actively breathing in, they rely on oxygen naturally going into their cells and coming out. If they were any bigger, the distance an oxygen molecule would have to travel would be too large to be efficient, meaning that they just wouldn't be able to breathe properly. So just, just be thankful for spiracles, you know. Thank you. Thank you, spiracles. Evidence of spiracles was discovered in the first ever land animal, which, as I said before, was a millipede, Pneumodesmus pneumani, which was found in Scotland by a trained professional who's been searching for years? No. An amateur fossil finder and bus driver, Mike Newman. Well done, Mike. Hence the name, Pneumani. How paleontologists reckon they can find spiracles in this? I do not know. Personally, I think they're just making it up. They just, they just want to sound smart. I can barely see the millipede. Thank you very much everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about millipedes. Feel free to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Tell me what I'm doing well. Tell me what I'm not doing well. Everything. And yeah, see you next time for some more creepy crawlies in, in my garden. At some point I'll, I'll travel outside, but for now we'll just, we're just gonna stay in the garden. There's a lot here. My word. In the animal kingdom, a lot seems to be done with feces. Either you eat it, or you build with it. They probably look at us just there like, what are you doing, you fool? You're flushing the perfect, perfect building material away. It's like, you know, if we saw an ant throwing away bricks. That would be impressive. <laughs> an ant just tossing bricks over its, well, I've gone off track, gone off track. Where were we? Oh yeah, millipede feces. <laughs> My word, right, <clears throat> millipede feces.